Hello, once again, greetings from the low country. This is week number three of the Motivation Week broadcast. I'd like to thank you for joining me once again. I'm down in beautiful Savannah and the lovely Coastal Empire. First and foremost, I'd like to give glory to God, the Father, our Heavenly Father, for without Him nothing is possible, and that is a true statement you can take to the bank. I'd like to recognize my mother, Evangelist Lunetta Darby, and my father, Minister Roy Darby. I want to say hello to my three beautiful sisters, Denise, Andrea, and Cherry, as well as my two beautiful children, Deja and DJ, and my lovely bride, Stephanie Darby, as family is very important to me. Let's get right into it once again. I left off last week talking about where did God call us to be? There's a lot of different denominations out here, and one can simply get confused. Do I become Baptist? Am I Pentecostal? Am I Methodist? Am I Lutheran? Am I Seventh-day Adventist? Jehovah's Witness? Catholic? I mean, these are all denominations that were started by man. And if something is started by man, I said it before, it's bound to have flaws at some point or another. But what does the Word of God teach us? What denomination do they teach us? Are these denominations designed to just throw us off and lead us down a path of destruction? The Word of God says that if the simple piece of fiber, very small piece of a thing is unholy, then the whole lump is unholy. That's what God says. So where did he call us to be? What religion did he call us into? What did he tell us to practice? I'm going to begin reading out of the word of God in the book of Leviticus, chapter 20 and verse 7. Listen to this. Sanctify yourselves Therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. Now here is God speaking to his children, telling them to be ye holy. Sanctify yourself, set yourself apart, and be holy. Don't follow any denomination, don't follow after a man, but it is God speaking to us, telling us to be holy. So let's bring that on over into the new agreement. And you see here in Romans chapter 12, we can read that. Very, very simple scripture here, easy to understand. And we've seen this before, we've said it before, but I want to be really grasped as a body of Christ what it really means when you read this verse. Romans chapter 1 and verses 1. I'm going to begin to read. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, there's that word again, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Basically, this is your base service, your standard service. Very reasonable. Present yourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. That is the reasonable service. So here again, God is calling his children to be holy, to be set apart, to be sanctified, not to be in the denomination. And I'm including the Church of God holiness as a denomination as well. Because they're one too. We ought to follow the word of God not an overseer, not a senior bishop, the Word of God. And even if they are following the Word of God, then everything should be all right. But they're bound not to. At some point, no matter who they are, the confessions of their denomination, the policies, their bylaws are going to conflict with what this Word says. Either that or they're going to have a misrepresentation and misinterpretation of what this word says. And it's going to be a flaw, and they'll lead people to destruction. 
God will explain his word. Follow me again one more time. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12. Very simple verse. Hebrews chapter 12. Turn there. See, God makes it very simple for us to understand. It's not anything that is going to be very difficult. It's going to be very simple. And if it's not, you ask God and he'll give you wisdom. God will give you understanding of his word. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. It says as such, Follow peace with all men. And, there it is, holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. So if I know I have to be born again to see the kingdom, now God is telling me I have to be holy to see the Lord. So holiness here is undoubtedly what we as followers of Christ is supposed to be. But just think about that. How liberating is that? To get rid of the money lines, to get rid of the fictitious sinner's prayer, and be holy, be set apart, be sanctified. A lot of what we see going on now in the local congregations, and I call them that because that's exactly what they are in religious business, is foolishness. Let's just be real with it. Let's get down to what it is. It's foolishness. Money lines. No such thing. Paying for a blessing from God? No such thing. Sowing a seed of money to reap certain benefits as if God is something you want to pay off? No such thing. Not even in the Word of God. Following behind necromancers, prophet liars, no such thing in the Word of God. The Word of God makes it very clear in Hebrews. In sundry times he speaks to us by our fathers and the prophets, but in these last days he speaks to us in his Word. This is where we get all our knowledge from, the Word of God. But if you don't follow God, what you'll end up doing is following a man. And when you follow man, that is going to be the beginning of your troubles. It is possible to follow the word of God. Very possible. So where does that leave us? It leaves us in God's hands, being holy, following his word, being sanctified and set apart. So I challenge all of you, take a look at the denomination you said. If you're involved in Pentecostal, where speaking in tongues is a must, or they declare you don't have salvation. If you're involved in baptism, in a Baptist denomination, where they say that if you're going to be saved, you must be baptized by full immersion. If you're involved in a church of God of holiness, where they don't allow the women to wear women's pants, they don't allow the women to wear any makeup whatsoever, they don't allow the women to do many things that they can do according to the word. But if you do it, they call you a harlot. Or is it Seventh-day Adventists? Take a look at them. Where Saturday, the Sabbath day, is God to them. Everything is on the Sabbath. And they follow a woman who started the congregation, Ellen G. White who had a vision or a dream where she saw the fourth commandment, keep the Sabbath holy, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. She saw it glowing in a dream. From there, they generated a whole denomination, a whole following. Or is it Charles Taze Russell's creation, Jehovah's Witness, where they follow the watchtower? Just take a look at your denomination and your religious business, and you tell me if it lines up with the word of God. If it does not, and it will not, then you must conclude 